Today we are in Ridgewood, Queens, to look at the site of an old area arena. The building that we are looking at right now was once known as the Ridgewood Grove Arena. Before we begin on the arena, you will notice an elevated railway track at the end of the street. That track, the M line, separates Brooklyn and Queens in this section. I'm standing on the Queen's side, while across the street we would be in Brooklyn. More on that later though. The Ridgewood Grove Arena was a venue that was primarily used for boxing and wrestling cards from the 1920s to the 1950s. And again from 1982 for a few years, just as the WWE, then known as the WWWF, was about to become the global leaders in professional wrestling. It's difficult to pin down an exact date that the arena was opened. Online sources state that it was opened in 1926, but having done a little further research myself, the first boxing card that I was able to find at this location was on December the 11th, 1920 where the main event was a 15-round points win decision for Dutch Brandt over Joey Leonard. Perhaps confusing the issue is that this arena was called the new Ridgewood Grove Arena, which replaced Benner's Ridgewood Grove down on Seneca Avenue. To pinpoint the date that this arena was opened, I used boxrec.com and the Brooklyn Eagle newspaper archive, both of which list the first bout as having happened in 1920. The last boxing match to have taken place here happened in 1954, where Danny Giovanelli knocked out Mike Colucci. The tomato cans in the ring were then replaced by real tomato cans on the shelf when the arena was converted into a King Cullen supermarket. One interesting note about the Ridgewood Grove Arena was that in 1934, the Friends of New Germany, the FDENDE organization, more than 5,000 pro-Nazi supporters gathered at this location to call for a boycott of Jewish merchants. They were met by an equal number of anti-fascist National Blue Shirt Minutemen who were boycotting German-owned stores in the area. Of course, these were the days before the internet, but one can't help but think of the similarities between then and now. It seems quite inconceivable that the Third Reich Nazis would hold a rally in Queens, New York, right? Well, consider this. Something else that you might not know. In 1939, the year that the Second World War began, the German-American Bund held a rally with 20,000 supporters attending, complete with swastika armbands, at New York's Madison Square Garden, no less, which they called a pro-American rally. They offered their open support for Adolf Hitler, white supremacy, and a gaudy-looking stage complete with a 30-foot banner of George Washington, surrounded by swastikas. Again, outside of Madison Square Garden, there were thousands upon thousands of anti-fascist protesters. The more things change, the more they stay the same. If you have time, watch the short documentary called A Night at the Garden. It is quite an eye-opener that this was happening in New York City the same year that the war broke out. You don't normally get to hear Madison Square Garden boasting about this event. Anyway, back to the Ridgewood Grove. In 1982, a married couple, Frank and Nazi Shiaka, decided to revive the glory of the new Ridgewood Grove when they started to promote their own wrestling and boxing shows. Partnering with the WWWF, they ran more than a dozen wrestling shows over the next three years, featuring some of the top wrestling stars of the time, such as Andre the Giant, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, 
Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Rocky Johnson, the father of Dwayne the Rock Johnson. One of my personal favourite wrestlers, Hot Stuff, Eddie Gilbert. And Bob Backlund. The last wrestling show held here was in 1985, and was actually an AWA card, which also featured Bob Backlund, along with Kurt Hennig, and Larry Zavisco. The final wrestling match to have taken place at the Ridgewood Grove Arena was when the Road Warriors, Animal and Hawk, who totally would have fit into this neighborhood in the 1980s, took on the team of Sergeant Slaughter and Jumping Jim Brunzel. The elevated railway track that we see here was originally a BMT line, Brooklyn Manhattan Transit, and it is the last remaining remnant of the original Brooklyn Elevated Railroads. The railway dates back to 1889 and was originally called the Myrtle Avenue Line. The line was renamed in 1924 as the BMT 11, and then in 1967, it was renamed to the M Line, which it is still called to this day. The BMT 10 also operated partially on this line, eventually becoming the J Line. <laughs> 